Hallelujah. Go, Mom. Lord, we worship you in this place, God. Thank you, Lex. Amazing, amazing worship this morning. So again, as she said, my name is Rachel, and, and I've been through some things. But I know one thing is for sure. I, I talk to young people about choices and the choices they make. And sometimes choices are made for us, and what we do with those choices can, can bring pain or purpose. And so I'll just tell you a little bit about those choices. So I obviously did not make a choice to be black and white. Um, and, and the kids always think that's funny because they say, oh, you're Puerto Rican, Dominican, Hispanic. And, uh, but this is not a choice that I made. And so my mother's family was white and prejudiced against black people. And my, my father's family was black and prejudiced against um, white people. And therefore, that kind of left me nowhere, if I may. Uh, my mother was an alcoholic, a drug addict. Um, up until about 10 years ago, she's here with me this morning. And God rescued her, saved her, delivered her uh, from the grip of, of crack cocaine and, and alcoholism. Tell you this, uh, I, I would always look at her and I would say, These, I do not want to be like her. I will not be a drug addict. I will not spank my kids. I will not be an alcoholic. And how many know that's exactly what I turned out to be? Because we we, we become what we see, not what we want to be. And so, well, being young, I. I Sex meant absolutely nothing. I was molested. I was I was raped. At 15 years old, I got pregnant uh, by a gang member who right now is serving time for murder. Um, I have a 23-year-old daughter who's getting married in July. On July 1st, she's an amazing young woman of God, man. And and uh, so when I got saved, she was about nine or ten, and really bucked against me. Oh, now you want to be a mom? All of a sudden, you want to show up and you want to tell somebody what to do. And you know, but I had amazing leaders because before that, I, she was the one who kind of raised my 19-year-old son. She's the one who would wake up in the middle of the night and her mom's gone to the club or or so-and-so's in the room and the door's locked, you know the rules, don't know. And, and so she had a lot more uh, bitterness and anger in her heart towards me than, than my son did because he was only about four when I got saved. And, and so when I called one of my leaders and I said, Cece, I, I don't know what to do. This girl's gonna make me go back to jail. And I'm a killer. And she said, no, you need to eat those words because that's a monster that you created. And until you are able to show her that you will show up, show her that you have changed, show her that you're not just being a mother by title, but you're being a mother by action, until Tell you show her that, that she has every right, this young lady is hurting, she has every right to speak to you that way, to say those things to you because this is the monster you created. And so therefore, when I was 20 years old, I got pregnant. Um, and my son's father has done federal time for pimping and pandering. I worked at Wet n Wild during the day and I worked at the strip club at night. And how I many know the strip club wins out in Las Vegas, man. And so I was making a lot more money doing that. And so um, I, my, I, I ended up, and that was 20. Now by the time I was 21, I actually, went to jail. I went to a party, my cousin got jumped uh, by some girls, and um, when she got jumped, I had a gun, I, I shot this gun in the air, and, and a bullet ricocheted off the sign, and according to the police report, there's 172 people in the parking lot, but when it ricocheted off that sign, it killed my uncle. Mm. And so this is my grandmother's only son, my auntie's only brothers, right, a father of six, his youngest was less than a month old at the time, and, and this was on May 17th, 1998, and so it was, you know, God is so faithful, I heard her say too, that we'll see things, and it'll, it'll just confirm that we are exactly where we're supposed to be, and so when I first got saved, God gave me 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, yes. if any woman is in Christ, she is a new creation, yeah. The old has passed away. Behold, all things are now brand new. Amen. But we have to behold those brand new things. So when I got saved, and, and that meant something to me because he died on May 17th. So, so I ate that scripture. I, I, it was bitter at first because it's hard to get rid of old things. It's hard to get rid of old bits. It was hard for me when I came into the ministry to, to, to think of sex as something that was a good thing because it was so bad. And, and, and I met my husband in the ministry. And my grandma would say, if he loves you, he'll wait. And to which I would reply, if I make him wait, Grandma, he's going to leave. <laughs> you don't know how this works. <laughs> but let me tell you, my husband waited. We didn't even kiss until we were married. We've been married now almost 13 years. God was able to restore to me my purity. A man that was taken at a young age. And, and so I want to encourage you, men and women, uh, those that are in here, God is a restorer. Not only has he restored my mother and my, my children to me, he's, he's added even more. I have, I have three more amazing children. Um, and I'm an only child. My mother has no more kids, right? My father, he may have one, but he doesn't really have any other kids either. So I'm it. I was the lot, if I may, that was casted. And when I got out, uh, when I got locked up at 21 and, and killed my uncle, I was locked up for murder. And I'm raised in the neighborhood, but the neighborhood never tell, told, tell, told me things like uh, when you commit a crime uh, in the state of Nevada and you use a weapon, there's something called a weapons enhancement. So not only was I convicted of second degree murder, 
of which I would have done a life sentence for the murder, but I was also, there was a weapons enhancement involved, so that was another life sentence. And I'm 21 years old, literally facing the rest of my life in prison. I was locked up five days before my daughter's fifth birthday, and all I wanted to do was be the mom that I always wanted. Because when my mom was around, she was good, things were good, but, but when she wasn't drawn away by men or, or drugs or alcohol, then, then things were not good. And so I wanted to be what my daughter never had, what I never had to my daughter, and I was not able to do that. And I'll tell you what, my daughter came around the corner the other day and I was on the phone uh, with Miss Hayes and, and, and she came around the corner and, and, in her wedding dress and it took my breath away. And let me tell you, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, that one you didn't have anything to do with. Because see, when I got saved, that one had a lot of issues. That one was already almost 10. That one already thought she was grown. And, and so these other ones that I think I have a, I have control over and I'm trying to raise them up in the way they should go. I'm trying to train them up. Let me, let me encourage you women. Let me encourage you mothers. Amen. It, it, that's not on us. Yeah. We model for them. We are examples to them. And as long as we're examples, they will become what they see. And so a lot of times our church kids get lost in the shuffle. A lot of times our church kids leave immediately when they turn 18 because our church kids, everybody thinks they should be okay. But we don't know what these parents are doing at home. We don't know that they're talking about the pastors. They're talking about the leaders. They got to bring a 12 pack of soda and they're upset about it. So we have church kids that are in the ministry, that are in the church, that are hurt. They feel like, you know what, this is, this is hypocritical. And then it's like, well, as long as you live in my house, you're going to go to church. For what? What are we going to church for? You're just as mean and evil as people out there. But you're fake. Right? So these kids are brutal because they've been lost in the system, lost in the shuffle. We feel like because they're church kids, they should be all right. But let me encourage you this morning. I'm here to let you know they're not. And we need some women, man. We need some women of God who are willing to be mothers to other people's children. We need some women of God who are willing to, to take up that mantle, even if you don't have a title, even if you, you, you're not pastor or, or evangelist or chaplain so-and-so, but yet you see a hurting child in your church, you see one that just kind of sits off to themselves, isolates themselves, you become that person's bridge to God to train a child up in the way they should go. I was studying this, and that means give them an appetite. Whet their appetite for the Lord. Serving God is fun. So I always tell my kids, you don't know, go behind what's, in, what's behind door number three. Because after I killed my uncle, I got convicted of murder, man. They overturned that verdict. But I'll tell you what, it, it wasn't overturned in my life. So when I got out of jail, I, I went from being like the housewife to being on the track. Amen. I went from being one who was in contempt, like, oh, look, I thought I was all that. Because I would always say, I have morals. I didn't sell dope to pregnant people. People try to trade me diapers for dope. I didn't sell dope to those people. I thought I had a standard in the world. Amen. I thought I, 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 was, I was above these other people. Oh, but God humbled me. Just yeah. like uh, uh, Pastor Arvis was talking about last night. We can surrender willingly or unwillingly. Yeah. So having to live with the fact that I took my uncle, my family was saved, and, and, and they loved me. And if they would have hated me as much as I hated me, it might have been okay. Mm. But it wasn't. Mm. Mm. Because they loved me. Amen? And when the word of God says love covers a multitude of sin, yeah. absolutely it does, even murder. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, because my family loved me, I didn't commit suicide. I attempted to because I was going to pick up 400 ecstasy pills, but we serve a God. I know a lot of times we would say, oh, well, when we're ready, right? When we're, when we, when we, we need to take a bath before we get in the shower. No, <clears throat> that, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Right. I, the only thing better for me was death at this time. And I was going to pick up 400 ecstasy pills and God met me at a car wash. I got up the wrong freeway, the wrong turn, got, went to call my connect, because back then we didn't, you know, pagers were popular, but I went to call my connect, and Victory Outreach Car Wash was there. Because I served God in jail. I served God in jail. They called me the church lady. I prayed for people who went home. I was upset because they kept coming back. You know you should have been violated in parole. But, but I served God in jail, and when I got out and I backslid, I thought, well, you know what, now he's really not going to forgive me. Now he'll never forgive me. He, he, he made a miracle. This verdict was overturned. I've never seen a day in prison except to go preach to the women and bring them hope. God created a miracle. Good God. And I ended up the prodigal daughter, man. The, the, uh, the drug addict that I said I would never be. The alcoholic I said I would never be. Trying to numb the cry of six children who now are being raised without a father. And a mother who lost her son. My aunties who lost their brother. And trying to numb that and just even yes. face them. The only thing I knew to do was to run to what I saw my mom run to. So I, I knew good and well God wouldn't have nothing to do with me now. Heaven.
<laughs> but he met me at that car wash. I don't even know what happened to the phone call to my connect, but I do know that there were some young men there with some dickies on and some tattoos. One of them had a teardrop on his eye, and, and, and he said, can we wash your car? Sure, just don't touch the inside. I'm already a dead woman walking. I literally have wrote a note. If you find this note, that means I'm dead. Please give my kids to my, at the time, my crackhead mother, because I don't want them with their deadbeat father. That was my note, right? That was it. That was my exit of the world. But these young men said, they washed my car. I came, they said, no matter how far you've gone, you're not in such a deep hole that God's hand cannot pull you out. No matter where you've been, God is looking for you. He's chasing you. There's an APV out on you. All points bulletin. The hounds of heaven are out on you. God has a purpose for your pain. God has a purpose for your life. And because they had tattoos and one of them had a teardrop, I thought, you must know a little bit about what I've been through. Right. But when they opened their mouth, all I heard was grace. All I felt was hope. I could feel it that what they were telling me was true. And I ended up in Victory Outreach, and, and, and my pastor's wife has Benny tattooed on her neck. She delivered one of her children in prison. Right. But you know what? I'm, I'm in the house of a bunch of grateful people, which leads me to be grateful. Because at the end of the day, I'll tell my testimony. They blow me out of the water, amen? Yes. They, we got some people that have been yes. through some things that God has genuinely saved, yes. genuinely de yes. delivered, who are not afraid to go back to the neighborhoods, yes. who are not afraid to go back yes. to these crack alleys, who are not afraid to go back to these brothels, these tracks, these strip clubs, because we know, we know more than anything that God is able. Right. And, and, and we're unashamed of the gospel. It's good news that Jesus defeated death, yeah. right? Because we too can yeah. defeat anything. Yeah. So I came this morning to encourage you, man. God has took my mess and made it a message. At the end of the day, I am one who's very, I'm, I'm, I'm very much passionate about young people. I just know that I know that it's not over for them. A lot of them have caught a record. They're, they're, they're filling up our prisons, right? They're filling up our, 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 our morgues. They're filling them up, and we want to be in church, and we want to play church, and we want to be comfortable, and we want to, you know, go on to get all these evangelical doctrines and these, you know, these titles and things, and our babies are dying. God didn't rescue us what he rescued us from for us just to look good. He didn't rescue us for us to leave that in the past. A lot of people say, let the past pass. No, no, no. We bring our past to the present because it's for somebody else's future. If we live to tell about it, it's not ours anymore. It's for that next little Rachel who's being molested, who's being raped, that next little Rachel who's, who's out there thinking she could be the getaway driver, not knowing they're going to charge her with murder too if that 7-Eleven clerk comes up dead from a beer run. You know, this is not about us anymore. It becomes about them. And when we we as a church, the body, as a kingdom, begin to recognize and realize the, the, the power, the anointing, the authority we have to shift atmospheres, ladies and gentlemen. We walk into a room, things change because the Holy Spirit is with us. We have no reason to, to, to keep silent in front of the mayor or the governor or the president or, or a gang member or a prostitute or a baby. It doesn't matter. We we have that authority. I don't need, you know, I'm saying I don't, I don't, I graduated, uh, I got a GED, right? My kids are like, uh, you don't need a PhD. Miss Rachel, you got a master's in the streets. If right. anything, you can relate. Right. You, you, you can relate. You've been through domestic violence. You can relate to that woman who's getting beat. Right. You, everybody else is telling her, well, you should have been left. But we know what it is to stay. Right. We know what it is to say to ourselves, how am I going to raise this boy to be a man? Yeah. How, I'm willing to stay in this situation because I don't know what, I don't know what else is out there. Right. We know, we know, we got to, we cannot keep silent anymore. We got to be men and women who, who understand that because we live through it, it's now our business to go right. tell somebody else, you will live through it. Yeah. It's not our place to judge. It's not our place to think that, that we are so heavenly minded yeah. that we do become no earthly good. Right. It's not our place to always, always have to tell somebody, oh, well, you should have, could have, would have, but she didn't. What is she going to do now? Right. What are we going to do today for her? Right. So I just came to encourage you guys. I love God. I love people. I love Chantel. Her heart's amazing, man. And God will line us up with people. He'll line us up with people with the heart of God. And they may not go to our church. And our churches may not even understand sometimes what we're doing. But guess what? This is a kingdom thing. Amen. Right. And you're either going to line up and get on or you're going to get off. But at the end of the day, we will stand before the king solo. And we cannot say, well, my pastors didn't raise me up or my leaders didn't use me or I didn't have the, the permission to. No, 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 no. Passion doesn't need permission. Amen. And if we take what we got and run with it, all glory will go to God. Because they'll look at us like, who are you? Where did you come from? It doesn't matter. Do you have a business card? No, I don't do business cards. Because my name is signed in heaven. Amen. And at the end of the day, I just encourage, you know, this is embracing the power of surrender. And a lot of times we think we surrendered some things. Like Sister Iris was talking about last night, right? We didn't really surrender them. We just buried them so deep that when God starts dealing with them, now all of a sudden we're feeling some type of way. We want to lash out on those closest to us. And, you know, uh, I always call it like 
navigation syndrome. I got my tubes done a couple years ago. So, but, but, but there are roots. There's things that are still there that I thought God had dealt with. I thought I had dealt with, right? right? But it wasn't for me to deal with and just throw into the fire to cast off and never see again. No, 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 no. It was for me to deal with in such a way that that next young lady right. will know beyond a shadow of a doubt <laughs> that her path, her destiny has been crossed with the one true living God. Hallelujah. It's to be dealt with in such a way that not only does it uh, be surrender and it brings humility or, you know, hum humble, it makes yeah. us humble, but it also puts us in a position to be reminded that we didn't have nothing, God didn't have nothing coming. I'm a murderous, you know, harlot. <laughs> I didn't have nothing coming. But to God be the glory because he sees beyond that. Amen. Amen. So again, my name is Rachel. And I have amazing, uh, uh, Chantel's an amazing young lady. I do a lot in the community. Um, Ms. Lakeisha Hayes is here. We also deal, we have an um, organization. She has an organization that deals with behavior kids. You know, these kids are getting kicked out of Boys and Girls Club, kicked out of the community centers, and then we, wanna, we, we wonder why they're sitting at the community car, park busting out our windows, right? <laughs> like they have anything else to do in and, and, and the Legacy Learning Center because a lot of people don't understand there's a legacy to be left. Right. Okay, we missed it. Hey, Amen. Well, I miss it every day. Let me just keep real. But at the end of the day, what are we going to do with missing it? What are we, are we going to be honest even with ourselves that we missed it? I missed it in the way I talked to my husband, the way I talked to my kids. Or, or are we just going to just, you know what, oh, amen. We're just going to amen it off, hallelujah it off. No, 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 we need to admit it. We, we need to worship God in spirit and in truth. This is where I'm at. This is what hurts me because if we can't get past that hurt, then we end up hurting other people. And this is kingdom business, ladies and gentlemen. We're either going to make our daddy look good or we're going to make him look bad. That's right. And there are some things going on in the world that we, it's not, it's not our place to think that we know about, you know, homosexuality or about abortion or about, okay, amen. But guess what? What now? She's already had the abortion. She's already caught up in the same sex. What now? Right. We got to stop judging and we really have to start loving because yes. it's the kindness of the Lord that leads right. people to repent. That's right. It's not the cruelty. It's not the rules. It's not the stiff regulations. Right. It's the love of God. And I know that's what caused me to say, man, you know what? Through it all, man, Jesus Christ paid that guilt that I carried for killing my uncle. I don't have to carry that no more. Right. It's been paid for. Right. I'll be like, oh my gosh, you don't even cry. And I'll tell you what, listen how good God is. Today, March 25th, is my uncle's birthday. Yeah. So he does amazing things. Before the foundation of the earth, yeah. he knew I was going to be here today. Right. Having the ability to yeah. let you know the pain of my past has become yes. the purpose yes. of today that yeah. forces me into my destiny tomorrow. Yeah. I didn't know March 25th, but God did. Yes, yeah. did. I didn't know May 17th would be on everybody's table, but God did. Or 517 would be, but God did. So right. I encourage you, man. Whatever happens, God knows. He planned it. It's for a purpose. Find out what it is so you, we don't have to fail the test and do it over again. Yeah. God bless you guys. Yeah.